Uh, our final speaker of the day is Fred Blankenship. He joined the Kentucky Nut Growers in 85 and is a 15-year member of the NNGA. Fred is a dedicated hickory explorer and collector, as well as an expert at grafting. He considers his work with nut trees to be a beneficial hobby. Fred grows hickory, pecan, walnut, burr oak on his small farm in Kentucky. His hickory's major pecan won second uh, in the Montana and Kansas competition. Missouri. Or Missouri. Missouri and Kansas. I'll, I'll get here. And he took first place with pounds number two uh, in Nebraska. He'll speak today on Simpson number one. Thank you. Welcome, our guest. Um, I joined the Nut Growers in Kentucky in 1985. I went to a meeting, did sketches of the grafting, went home, did the grass, and they worked. Then I modified the uh, grafting that I'd done. Um, a couple of years ago, I come across this hickory here and uh, was interested in uh, this cavity right here. Nice open cavity, which releases a very good tasting kernel. So I contacted Mr. Simpson about the tree and I went down there and visited him for a while. And then I thought, well, we ought to send this off to Mr. Grauke. And this is what Mr. Grauke, uh, can we get a finer uh, adjustment on that? That's it? Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, you do it. <laughs> can't get them all. There we go, that's better. Hey, now I got a forward reverse on this, so if you want me to go back, go back. Um, so uh, the kernels can get lighter in color, but they're basically this color, and they have a very good flavor. Um, there's three things I like about this tree. It has a tremendous production record. It has a very uh, great longevity, and um, it grafts easy. This is a tree as it was just the other day, and we've got whoops, we've got a girdle so the fox squirrels can't get in it. Um, fox squirrels. That's a, a very large squirrel. Kentucky has a. Red haired belly and a gray back. Uh, since it's red haired, it can have black faces. What's your tell for tree rack? Yeah. Uh, this is the production this year on this tree. This is what the nut looks like before they mature. You know, you can read that real quick. Um, yes. I'll move to the list. Um, the Tinsley family, uh, when they moved into this little valley, uh, they quickly found this tree and collected from it for uh, about a hundred years. And um, Cecil Tinsley, the one that told Mr. Simpson about the tree, said in the 30s, 40s, and 60s, it had crops so heavy it looked like it would tear the limbs off the tree. And uh, Dr. Dr. Grocky says it has seven leaflets, but on shell bark seedlings I've grafted this too. It has thrown some nine leaflet patterns. There's a nine leaflet pattern right here. And this is grafted on shell bark roots, Doc. Um, and I'll talk more later about selecting root stocks later on. Now, this is a major seedling root stock. And they come from an orchard that uh, Mr. Yates used to own down at Crisney. Um, it's probably either got Posey or Green River in with Major. I, I set this tree out at my wife's place um, when it was three years old in 2002. And I grafted to it in 2005. And this year it was loaded with pollen and now has 12 nuts on it. I have Holderman <coughs> here, Fayette here, and this is all Simpson. 
There's another shot of the pollen. This is some of the tools I use for planting trees. Um, I probably dug over a thousand holes with that postal digger planting trees. I grow them in these pots. There's some seedlings. And a lot of times I put uh, a little sprig of clover in that pot to bind up the soil so when I set out the tree I don't lose that soil off that root system. And this is a a sort of a tray that I made out of six inch plastic pipe, put a handle on it, so when I ease that seedling out of that tube onto that tray, then I can upend it into that hole I just dug with a postal digger. And I carry uh, eight of these five gallon jugs in that trailer there when I order the trees. You need a blade bag for scooping out the sod, and an ax, and a postal digger to finish, clean out the holes, and I always carry my pruners with me. Um, right here, we had some boar damage. And I, when I go looking for boars, I got this big old pocket knife, it's razor sharp, and uh, I cut a, a, a boat shape in there, looking for that grub, flathead boar I call them, I don't know what their name is. Uh, this is uh, hinting grafted to pecan. So you can see the over undergrowing right here. And because of that bore, I cut off this, this half of the tree here where it forked. And I covered that with that uh, tangle foot I was telling you about yesterday. <laughs> yeah. 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 I bought me a scabbard from a sportsman's club so that I don't have to lay it laying around all the time. I just. <laughs> all right. Now, this was taken just a few days ago. Uh, there's a Simpson number one graft, and there's this major growing out here. And I really had to work hard to keep that cut back to keep it from overgrowing my graft here. This has been named Ruby's Major, and here is Hickory's Major that won second place. So I'm looking for cross pollination there. This is a tip bud graft, four flat. Now, last night I didn't put that extra wrap on there, but it's a four flat graft with that rubber on there, and then I cover with parafilm, and then I put another rubber on there because sometimes a hickory graft has to sit on there for maybe two months before they'll. Bolt. And there's where it come out, just like a rock. And uh, that's Simpson number one. This is one of my favorite shell bark selections, a seedling. Uh, very strong growing seedling. Uh, this shell bark occurs on a limestone outcropping, which is it's a very tough tree. Produces real good seedlings for grafting. Oh. Here's one of my buddies. What's that? Hickory Horn Devil. It's the caterpillar of the walnut imperial moth. The male is a, a light purple with yellow spots. The female is much larger, yellow with the purple spots. And he's six inches long and an inch in diameter. And now, now He's a moth that burrows into the ground. So I want to capture him. So I drill a hole in the bottom of this bucket, as big as the trunk of that tree, split it in half, tape it around that tree, and put dirt in there. So after he comes to a rest and excavate all his manure in him, he grows down into that bucket. Then I transfer him to a bigger tub with dirt in it and let him pupate. Okay, we're going to get into grafting here, and uh, I won't belabor you with reading all that, because if you want a CD, I can get one for you. <coughs> Here's my grafting tray, you saw that last night, and um, let's see, what are we going to do here? One flat grafting, alright, there's your sign wood, you make a cut down through there, you trim it off on two sides and narrow it down to a point. Pull that flap back, trim that up to point, slide it in there, 
wrap it up, put more parafilm around it, and sometimes I come over the top with the parafilm if I don't if I want to decrease the um, dehydration uh, to flap. Now the option on this is just slip that right down the middle there, and then put this one next to it and close it up. Uh, this is going to be three flap grafting. So like last night, I did a four flap, but uh, one of my early innovations was, was cutting this off on an angle. And that way when I matched it up here, I knew where to slice off this material here and get that flap up next to it and sealing it off. And you can do that on burr oak too. So I, I get my rubbers from uh, AM Leonard. I get my parafilm from a surgical supply place in Louisville. Now, if you want to do a side branch, the way you turn that bud up there is the way that limb's going to grow. So if you turn it up, it'll grow up. Now, I didn't have this last night show and tell. I forgot it. But I got it on the slide here. Um, this branch here is 42 years old and not hardly over two inches in diameter. This branch here to right here, I calculate the growth rings and they're so close together you can't count them with the naked eye. You have to have a powerful magnifying glass. And this branch to right here is 113 years old. So by the time you do the math and you multiply it times 16 and a half inches, which is the radius of Simpson number one tree, you're well over 600 years. And a tree that's got good production this year. And even in the worst year, it still has nuts on it. And it has great flavor. Now, here's Richard Simpson. Um, but anyway, there's me, we're doing a resistor graph boring on a tree. And the, the, this is made in Germany. It's a real piece of machine. Uh, it has a real small spade drill, and as the spade drill goes through the different annual rings, it puts out a graft, which I got a copy of right here. And this is, every inch is the growth rings per inch on that. And uh, they're different on both sides of the tree, but there's the somewhat mathematical calculations that comes out with the advanced age of that tree. This is Cecil Tinsley, and this is the late 70s. Um, he died when he was 93 years old. Got a little jing sing here. He was a man that lived off the land, and he respected hickory trees. That's why there's so many surviving in that area. There's a seedling down the creek from Simpson that Dr. Strain did a core drilling on. It's about 20 inches in diameter. It's 250 years old. And it has a nut very similar to Simpson 1. And the squirrels will cut the crop in the middle of July. They pick the little nut off, they bite the end off, they lick the sap out of it, they drop them on the ground. When you go hunting in the fall, you say, well, that tree didn't bear again this year. <laughs> Wrong. I had to make me a special shotgun shell to shoot the sign wood out of this tree. I call it my bolo shot. Take buck shot, which is about a quarter of an inch in diameter, drill a small hole through it, take a piece of stainless steel welding wire, and stick in each one of those and hammer it shut, fold it up, stick it back down in that shotgun shell, and poof, cuts the sign wood off. That's how I got the sign wood. Now, this is Buddy Tinsley. Wait a minute. How, how many of those in a shell? One. One pair in a shell. Yeah. One pair in a shell. Yeah. You, you can use the other. Them. Well, another member here packed finishing nails in the shotgun shell and shot them at it to get sign wood. But I like my bolo. Okay. Now, this is Buddy Tinsley, Cecil's son. Now Cecil saw this tree for the first time when he was five years old and he said it was just as big then as just before he died. But you know, two inches or four inches in diameter when you're a kid and when you're an old man, it's the same thing if you're standing across the field from it. But anyway... Tell that to my wife. <laughs> anyway, Buddy hunted around Simpson number one tree. They call it the Roundup tree because it is 
as Rocky said, opicular. And um, Buddy, 15 years ago, took some nuts home from that tree and planted them. Got three seedlings, gave two away, kept one. It's about 20 foot tall and just absolutely loaded with nuts. Very similar to Simpson number one, but it's got deeper ribs. That's Cecil Tinsley's home place. That's the country where Simpson number one grew. Yeah. <clears throat> this is Simpson number one bud. See how round it is? A real strong wood. Now, this is pecan, but the same uh, applies. These little white spots are lenticels. Everybody knows trees got lenticels. But to me, in selecting a shell bark seedling to graft Simpson II, it has to have a real prominent array of lenticels, uh, lots of them, even elongated ones, and if they have a height to them, stick up above the wood, the more the better. Because without an aggressive growing, it's not worth grafting to. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Questions? And I can go back or forward, whatever you want to see. But if you're like me, I gotta have three meals a day and snacks. And I haven't had any snacks. I didn't eat any of them. Yes, sir. Um, he wants to know how many pounds of trees I can get off of a certain age. Well, the uh, seedling there at the house has got 12 nuts on it this year. Next year it'll probably have three times that many nuts. Because this is a cultivar, like Cecil said, some years it had crops so heavy on it, it looked like it would tear the limbs off the tree. And when storms came up, he didn't know how it would survive. But it's extremely strong wood, you know. It's, it's very hard, but it's very dense. And uh, Dr. Bill Reed said that when trees grow in nitrogen-starved environments, they have close annual rings like that. Well, if they have a nitrogen-starved environment plus heavy crops, they can't put on any wood. So I think it's amazing color. And I recommend grafting it to anybody. Let's see, how are we going to get back? Okay.